What's going on, everybody? Dash Michaels here, and welcome to a very special Super Bowl edition of the Shorts and Hoodies podcast. I am joined here, as always, with the wild card, Jared. Jared, how you doing? Uh, I'm excited for the Super Owl, or the Superb Owl, I guess is what we're supposed to call it. The Superb Owl, yes. Yeah, the Superb Owl party. And that other voice that you hear right there, that is the voice uh, of Derek. Derek is uh, a all-star with the Shorts and Hoodies podcast from our season one. Back to us from, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, top 10 football players from movies we did, right? Yeah, we did that one, then uh, the Harry Potter one, too. That's right. That was a weird episode. (laughs) Harry Potter. <laughs> that was a weird episode for me i'm not gonna lie uh <laughs> derek is uh joins us he is with the undercast company uh underrated is the name of his podcast you can find it on spotify where else can you find it uh you know apple uh pod chaser or youtube um you know or on youtube uh pretty much anywhere you listen to a podcast wherever you listen to this podcast you can hear my podcast too awesome 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 so like we said It is Super Bowl weekend. Um, I am super excited about this. Uh, Super. Uh, I do have my OBJ Browns jersey on. He's not a Brown, but he is a Ram. uh, My team. In his first Super Bowl. uh, Hopefully to get his first ring. Uh, I'm super excited more than anything for this halftime show because I'm an old school hip hop head. And there is nothing better than Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Eminem. Uh, of course, we are getting Mary J and Kendrick. Uh, so I cannot wait to see some lowriders on that football field. I got to <sighs> ask, though, Dash, it looks like you've never worn that jersey, big guy. It is I really crisp. have. I know. No, I keep, mm. my, I keep my jersey. I don't wear my jersey often because I don't want to get them messed up. Uh, I don't have many jerseys. I have my OBJ. I've got a Baker jersey. I've got an Indians jersey. Um, but I don't wear my jerseys a lot because I don't want to get them messed up. You got to keep them nice. You got to keep them fresh. Yeah. I have a lot of like t-shirt jerseys, you know, similar to what Derek has on. Yeah. Um, And those have just have holes all up in them. (laughs) (laughs) I'll wear the mess out of them. So Dash, are you, cause I, cause you know, like I said, I'm a big Rams fan. You know, I live in Southern Mm -hmm. California, so I got to root for the Rams because I don't care about the Chargers. Um, But uh, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, sir. You put respect on that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, are you like, because I know the Detroit is pulling for the Rams because, you know, their boy Stafford, you know, right, for right. so many years could never win with them. So they're like, all right, let's, let's see Stafford win, even if he can't win with us. Are you in the same boat with the with OBJ? I am. And it's literally all right. the only reason I'm pulling for him all right. uh, for, for L.A. One, I mean, it's is this the third time that we've had a home team at their Second stadium? time. It's never happened for like 48 years, and then it happened twice in a row. Okay, cool, 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 cool. No, yeah, because we were close with Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. We were really close with Minnesota. Yeah, um, yeah that's, that's literally the only reason I was like, when we lost OBJ, I was like, uh, it sucks, but it, it wasn't – I don't feel like it was really a, a good marriage between the Browns mm-hmm. and OBJ. And it was just like, I mean, Jarvis was getting everything, but it was really cool to have that, you know, that LSU connection back together again with mm-hmm. uh, Jarvis and OBJ. But I don't know, it, it didn't work out for us, but it did work out for him. So I am pulling for him. Uh, that's why I am pulling for the Rams. That's literally the only reason, because I, could, I couldn't care less about uh, the LA Rams or really any other team but the Browns. So uh, I did a little bit of different decoration here because it is a sports show. I do have my dog pound uh, flag up. Um, but like I said, yeah, top 10 sports, movies, and TV shows is our top 10 tonight. I'm going to get us started off right now with one of the best, I'm going to call it a, a teen movie. And this movie is more of a 90s movie than it, than it led on, only because it came at the end of the 90s in 1999. Uh, this was... I'm going to argue the beginning of somebody we talked about last week, or was it last week, Jared? What did we do last week? Was it horror? Did I barely remember yesterday? Uh, (laughs) I think we did horror last week. Yeah, it was horror. Yeah, it was horror with Tiff. Uh, Mr. Paul Walker, these were kind of back-to-back movies for him in the beginning of his career. 
uh, and led by none other than James Vanderbeek and the man, Mr. John Voigt. This is Varsity Blues. Uh, <laughs> it's kicking me off here. It's so much more of a 90s movie, really, than, like I said, it came at the very tail end of the 90s. But the hair, the jeans, like every <laughs> everything about the way the, the movie looked was so 90s, in my opinion. It was typical 100% high school movie with the varsity jacket, the players, and everything else like that. Oh, and Derek, I want to apologize. I thought mm. you were actually talking about the Cincinnati Bengals and replacing them with the uh, Chargers. I was like, Whoa, oh, no, I was very confused for a second. Okay, I was like, yeah, what? I was okay. like, I saw that confusion on your face. I was like, oh, did I jack up? I did. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, but man, the Varsity Blues is just, ah, uh, that movie is like quintessential, like 90s football, anything. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Con, Scott Con's character. And then you have Billy Bob, um, just, and then the angst between, how headstrong the coach was and them mm. taking it back for themselves, which is, I mean, kind of a very weird thing in, in, in that administrator student, you know, back and forth kind of thing. But then you dive into the cortisone shots and all that stuff and those, the scar tissue and everything that, you know, Paul Walker was going for. And it's one of my favorite things, like that scene where James Vander really like bust into the locker room and he was like you put that needle in there and he's got that really bad texas twang <laughs> that it's just like oh you don't you don't speak like that but yeah that's my don't want your laugh <laughs> yeah i don't want your laugh oh <laughs> uh, uh, all right jared take us into your number 10 sir uh so i'm actually going back into the 90s here 1994 to be exact we got danny o'shea versus uh, kevin o'shea in urbania ohio uh, Icebox was, uh, I think it was Danny O'Shea's daughter wanted to be a quarterback in the Little Giants, and that's the movies there. Um, and uh, yeah, I was trying to put a spin on it, but I just, I think it's so great because I loved the. Uh, oh, what was his name? Because he just made a comeback into into it. He was Moranis. Yeah, Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Merck Moranis was uh, Danny O'Shea. And then we all kind of know who Kevin O'Shea was. And you guys know I'm horrible with names. But it was just these misfit ragtag of nobodies versus, of course, the Dallas Cowboys, you know. And it was just, it was so great to kind of watch, you know, Pee Wee football again and remember what it was like to get, you know, nailed around as a little kid in a bunch of pads and you had no idea what you're doing. So, uh, yeah, I know that was really bad delivery, but. The gi little giants. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I had no idea what you're talking about, only because I've never seen this movie. I haven't seen it, it was like either. It, I just heard you say something about little giants, and I was like, I recognize that as words about a movie. So, right. Yeah. And that was the thing. Like, it, it, it was such a staple of what I, what I would assume is probably going to be on somebody's list. Uh, it's not on mine, but I'm sure it is. Uh, movies like The Sandlot uh, or like Angels in the Outfield, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that that was. Movies that when we were young, and you get the California Angels hat on too. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, movies that when we were kids that we just kind of came up with, and it, I don't, I don't even know why I never saw it, but I just never did. All yeah. right. Well, I am now one for one on both of you for movies yeah. that we have not seen, so we're kicking it off good. Uh, I don't know, Derek, if you've watched some of the earlier episodes when I first yeah, first yeah. came on. Okay, yeah, I, I I'm just, just curious I really... how you're going to work Zootopia into this list at some point. Look oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry, sir. I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, okay. But Derek, I'm curious about your number 10. Where are we at here, bud? All right. So I'm going to keep with the 90s theme here. Um, and I decided to like kind of be like, all right, I'm going to do at least one sport. Like not when I'm going to double up on any sports. So I'm only going to have one sport of each movie with each sport. So this is my basketball one. Uh, this is a movie from the early 90s uh, that was directed by the great sports director uh, Ron Shelton. Uh, this is a kind of a street level sports movie uh, and it's called White Men Can't Jump. I absolutely have you guys I don't know if you guys have seen this but this is one of my absolute favorite it's like a sports comedy and you know you got Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson and as like a white guy who played a lot of basketball I definitely could relate a lot. I definitely have never been able to dunk and so I can relate to that aspect of the movie. Um, I went back and I didn't rewatch a lot of stuff before this, but I had time to watch, watch White Men Can't Jump because I was like, I don't know how well this is aged. It's actually aged surprisingly well because really it's has, just like, yeah. yeah, 
you think about a lot of movies like oh it's a movie from the early 90s that talks about race relations in basketball and like rosie yeah. perez and you're like oh how is that gonna be and you watch it like oh no because they don't like it's not like you know they oh we solved racism in fact they kind of like skew that a little bit where there's like a tournament in the middle of the movie where they're like right. there's all these guys these corporate guys who are just kind of like oh yes the, the the brothership tournament or whatever it is and it's got like a big logo of like a black hand and a white hand shaking hands and and then those the sponsors are the ones who get all like nervous and run away and it's just kind of it's a really really interesting movie it doesn't delve too deep into that um it's not like you know do the right thing or something but it gives you just enough to kind of be like all right this is a really interesting movie about like racial relations in the 90s and sports and it is just like a really interesting sports movie there is some really good stuff um for anybody who doesn't know uh, woody harrelson kind of is this hustler he just is this dorky white guy who goes around to different you know um street side uh courts and stuff like that and just kind of hustles people out of money because they're like oh who's this dork you know and he ends up you know making a lot of money with like that kind of hustles wesley snipes where they become teammates and really great movie and if anybody out there hasn't seen or you haven't watched in a while i i can't recommend enough white men can't jump and it's also got some interesting like subplots like there's a movie where it should end you think okay the tournament's over it still goes for like another 30 minutes there's still a little more intrigue and things that does kind of become about the characters um and you know some good basketball in it too very good basketball uh I, I, such a great dynamic uh between snipes and harrelson and yeah and, and harrelson at the very beginning of his career, uh, still kind of a, I don't want to say a nobody on Cheers, but really hadn't even come into his own on the show at that time. Um, but such a great character. And that I was kind of before too. people broke out of TV shows and the movies. So it was kind of like he was doing a, you know, a little bit of a novel thing to be like, oh, this is just this, this guy from Cheers. You know, he's Woody in real life. He's Woody on Cheers. So people just right. think he, that's all he can really do. And that's all he can play. But he kind of, you know, showed this other side to him for sure. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we are going to move into my number nine here. Um, <clears throat> a, 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 is it me? Speaking of, of race relations, this takes us into a 2000 movie that, that dealt uh, kind of at the height of uh, civil rights and the integration of schools, uh, white teams uh, teaming up with, with black teams. Uh, this is Denzel. This is Strong Side. This is Remember the Titans, um, one of my absolute favorite films overall, but in the scheme of literal sports movies, it's, I mean, I, I couldn't put it past other, other movies that I'll get to eventually. Uh, it's such a, a great story. Um, Ryan Gosling, hella young Ryan Gosling. <laughs> um yeah, the the dynamic between uh, was it uh, Gary Bertier uh, and, and and his uh, strong side partner, um, and and seeing where they started and, and not wanting to get along and, and not blocking for the other teams and and and, and passing and all that stuff, and it's just it's just incredible that it was based you know it's based on a, on a true story and everything, and that years after their high school careers are our best friends still and all this stuff. And it was my absolute favorite scene is, is still to this day of, of Denzel's character um, of Herman Boone and him talking to Gary Bertier. And he's like, where's your mama at? You got your mom and your dad. And who's your daddy? Who's your daddy, Gary? Who's your daddy? <laughs> One of my absolute favorite scenes in a movie. Uh, yeah. Two thousands. Remember the Titans. Uh, hopefully Denzel will get that Oscar and he'll become uh, the most notable male actor here coming up here with three Oscar wins coming up. Nice. Very nice. He deserves yeah. it. He was great in the uh, in Tragedy of Macbeth, honestly. like I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's, it's you know, if you've seen Macbeth, you know the story, but like d right. just Denzel doing Shakespeare, incredible. You know, mm -hmm. nobody can deliver a line like him. Awesome. All right, Jared, what is your number nine, sir? So my number nine is about a man by the name of Peter LaFleur, uh, who, uh, yep, everybody already knows what it is, uh, Dodgeball from 2004. Oh. I just, <laughs> I, I love the, the whole, you know, he's got a small gym, it's the average shows, they're all floundering, and then they're like, oh, Dodgeball, what an easy way to make some money. And then they're like, nope, ESPN, the Ocho's got you, baby. It's yep. just, ah. Oh just so beautiful and gorgeous the, the storytelling the pirate the the cast of characters 
I mean, uh, Gordon, the dude who turns out to be a freaking monster who's just a lovable nobody. Yeah, no, sign me up. I, I'd love it through and through, 100%. <laughs> Steve the pirate. Steve yes. the fucking pirate. Sorry. Oh, he's one, of, he's one of my favorite actors. I mean, this is Wash from Firefly. And it's just like, what was it, the line? It was just like, we have a we have a effing pirate on the team, and he's like, "We have a pirate on the team." <laughs> it's like what? Oh, great! I forgot yeah, it was about dodgeball when I did my list. I love that how he got uh, he gets pegged in the head with a with a a slushy, and mm -hmm. I I think that was actually like not part of the movie and then they added it in or something like that and it gets a haircut he, he he trims himself up he's like hey man i'm sorry i acted all weird he's like well what are we gonna do with all this booty and no pirate and he's just like you yeah, <laughs> are at the end <laughs> and it yeah. made my day it made my day honestly like i love all of the great characters or actors in that movies and you guys brought up two of my favorite character actors alan tudyk and uh steven root so like just they're both so good in it. All just the like little parts in it. It's comic gold. It was on you know I was gonna have it originally as an honorable mention, but I'll skip over it now. But yeah, a great movie. Well, Derek, I mean it is your turn. Let's hear your number nine, bud. All right, so my number nine. Also, we're stick. I'll stick with comedy. Um, and this is there was a couple different Adam Sandler sports movies that I could have gone with. Yeah. Um, but I'm going with the OG one. This is a movie that you think of starts might be a hockey movie. But it quickly becomes a golf movie, and that is Happy Gilmore. Uh, this movie is just so ridiculous, so just over the top. Uh, you've got Adam Sandler giving, you know, whether whatever you think of Adam Sandler nowadays, you have to admit that his run in the 90s, his first two or three films, are some of the funniest films ever made. And he's just, it's just great because the premise on its own, a, a hockey player who is not very good at hockey because he can't shoot, but he ends up being like an incredible golfer and just all the ridiculous situations that come with that. You know, you've got Chubbs um, played by, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his name. Um, but, uh, well, you I know, he's Apollo actor, Creed. <laughs> Carl Weathers. Yeah, yeah, you know, Carl Weathers. Thank you. Yeah, Carl Weathers losing an arm again, yet again, um, just like he did in Predator. But uh, it's, you know, you've got, you know, Shooter McGavin, one of the all time great sports bad guys, just, I love Happy Gilmore. It's one of those movies, if you're in a bad mood, you can just put it on and just laugh your ass off. I love that movie. It was definitely... You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, it, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, back-to-back -back years for, for Adam at the beginning of his career with, with Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. Just unbelievable, like... And it's still crazy to see movies that he does now, whether it be Grown Ups or Uncut Gems or anything, to go, uh, you know, Mista, Mista, you know, that whole scene and everything. Um, that Mista, yeah. Mista lady, I think we killed her. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into my number eight here. Uh, so this movie um, came to us in 08. Um it was very much an indie movie. Uh, as people know, I am a humongous pro wrestling fan. I love pro wrestling so much. Being in North Carolina, which is kind of, you know, in the, in the early 90s and stuff, uh, the height of WCW versus WWF at the time, uh, Charlotte is, is, is a, was a big um, territory and a, a place that uh, a lot of pro wrestlers lived as in Ric Flair, woo! Uh, but not only that, people like Sting, who was on my my school bus route, his house was drove right by it every day. Um, but this movie came to us in '08. It was very much an indie movie, uh, and it stars an actor by the name of Mickey Rourke. This is the wrestler. Um, not, I mean, yeah, wrestling. <laughs> I put it's it in here sport. because it's a sport. It's a sport. Yeah, it's a Granted, sport. Granted, it is a Counts. choreographed, scripted sport. <laughs> <laughs> it is well, a some of the, sport. And some, some of the early hard. matches yeah. were on the fly. Some of the yeah. early matches were on the fly. And I, I wouldn't call it, it's, what, what are those, what are those, it's not a drama, but it's like an, South Park did a great parody of it. You know what I'm a, talking about. It's a it's a man soap opera is what it is. Thank you. 
soap yes. opera. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, his his whole character is pretty much, I mean, it's an homage to every early 80s uh, in the beginning of 90s uh larger than life character whether it be hogan or piper or anything like that kind of all mashed into one and you really get to see uh what it's like for a lot of these pro wrestlers that um have had hall of fame careers and then you know just like life does you have to you have this new blood in 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 these new shows and everything and a lot of these old guys get kind of left by the wayside um whether it's you know they're doing you know autograph signings for five dollars a piece or you know taking pictures or working regular jobs like he does at a butcher shop uh and then you see what it's like with the painkillers and having putting your body through all of that so we watch every you know monday night raw or AEW dynamite and stuff like that uh or in this case ring of honor from in the movie uh we we see all that that glitz and the glamour and this kind of shows us the other side of what happens when you've been out of the business for so long and you're still trying to stay relevant and still trying to stay alive. And it's, I mean, in this case, I mean, you don't really get to see it, but you kind of, you assume uh, of how it ends uh, to where he was happiest in the ring and where do you want to, where would he want to die kind of a thing at yeah. the same time. Uh, it's such a sad uh, it's a sad movie, but at the same time, it's not. And that's the thing that I get conflicted with with this movie is being a dancer. I know where I'm happiest performing, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not saying I want to die on stage in front of you know, hundreds of people, but. Not I going get. Black Swan on us? Yeah, no, I'm not going to go Black <laughs> Swan on you, but I get it. You know, it's, you know, it's, yeah, kind of a tale as old as time where. Uh, you you live and die for your for your craft, but yeah, that is my number eight from 08, the wrestler, Jared. Take us into your number eight as well. So I've, I've got two questions here. Uh, will we ever see Rachel Phelps in her bikini, and will Wild Thing ever get his pitch under control? That is the great story of Major League from 1989. I have my absolutely. Hat over here. <laughs> What's that? I don't have my Indian hat over here. I would have put it on. <laughs> yeah, I just Major League. It was just, it was one of those early movies that I actually got to kind of watch, and like it's it's so interesting because they're they're supposed to take a nosedive. You know, uh, the the lead bad lady. I think her name is Rachel Phelps. I don't know if that's the actual actor or not because I'm horrible with names and stuff. But like, it was just great because they're like, oh, just take a dive, do whatever. We want to rebuild, remove and all this stuff. There was apparently an alternate ending where she's like, hey, you guys did good. You did exactly what I wanted you to do. I'm not a bad person. Uh, I was thrown this so that way you guys would do better. And I kind of liked how they kept her as the original, uh, uh, if, yeah, the bitch in the movie. Because throughout the entire movie, you just hate her. Just yeah. hate her. And I think it's kind of cool that at the end you get a small little glimpse of her in what is essentially a bikini for a victory. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's just great. It's just it, it, it's like uh, what you were saying, Derek. It's just one of those movies that you could just watch whenever you need to rewatch a, a good movie. And seeing Charlie Sheen before Charlie Sheen went Charlie Sheen is is always kind of a nice thing. So <laughs> well, not only in Charlie Sheen, but Wesley Snipes as well as Willie Mays Hayes. Oh, yeah, Willie Mays Hayes. God, Willie like Mays. And I love that. He Bob wakes Buker. up, beats everybody off the oh, off the bat. God, yeah, <laughs> you got Bob Uecker, the voice of the Indians, uh, in there as well. Just a bit outside. Just <laughs> a bit outside. Yeah, <laughs> you hit that little. <laughs> All right. Well, Derek, let's uh, let's take you to let's let's take you into number eight. What's up, man? All right, so we did at the top talk about how the Super Bowl is happening this week, but that's not the only big sporting event that's going on in the world right now. We haven't really talked about that. We are smack dab in the middle of the Winter Olympics, which every four years, well, every two years um, for the Olympics in general, but the Winter Olympics every four years comes around, and I always get excited. I love the Olympics, especially the Winter Olympics, and this is a movie, a much, I think, in my opinion, underrated movie um, about the Winter Olympics, about an Olympian who, he didn't really, you know, this is a underdog story from 1988, uh, the Calgary Olympics. And no, it's not Cool Running, as good as that movie is. This is Eddie the Eagle, 
All right, this is a movie uh, by Dexter Fletcher that follows a just a just a lovable, dorky, just feel good guy, Eddie Edwards, and his drive to be an Olympian. And even though he's not the most physically talented guy, he has the drive and he has the conviction. And this kind of movie just shows the real side of sports that you love to see. And that I, you know, once again, kind of related to this because I always played sports and I was never the most talented guy out there, but I always gave it my all and gave it my best. And even if I came in last place, which is Eddie, you know, he's like, knows he's going to come in last. He's, it's all about how, if he can be his best self, it's not about whether he can win at the Olympics because he knows he'll never get a gold medal, but he, if he can get his best time, his best jump, then he can do it. Not to mention it's got, you know, great performances. Taron Egerton gives a completely different side than the suave you know, character that he would play in so many other movies like Kingsman and stuff. You also got Hugh Jackman as his coach, as this kind of alcoholic, just, um, you know, guy who like was reluctant to take him on, but they have such a good dynamic. You get cameos by Chris Walken and stuff. Um, it, it's a really good feel good movie that really kind of passed most people by when it came out in 2016. So Eddie Eagle is my pick for number eight. I could have swore you were to go with Cool Runnings to be completely. I, I, I kind of set you up there. I was, I was like, like put what's the going dominoes on? up and pull the rug out from you at the last second. That's fair. That's fair enough. I've, I think I've heard of Eddie Eagle, but I've never watched it. So, yeah, same. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard of it, but so you okay? You said Terry Dickerson, uh, Hugh Jackman as well. Hugh Jackman is yeah, his coach in it. He's the kind of uh, second build character in the movie. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's right. it's really good. You know, it's a movie that I had to cover on underrated because it's so underrated. I had to you know throw it up here. I love this sports movie. Um, That's you true. know, just a feel good movie. So one of those you know just sports movies. Some sports movies are you know I like both. Like the wrestler. That's not exactly a feel good movie, but it's good. This is the kind of the opposite side of the coin. You need that too sometimes. Awesome. Well, we're gonna move into my number seven, which is a feel good movie. It is a movie uh, brought to us by Disney. Uh, this is a movie uh, at the time starring uh, The Rock as Joe Kingman. This is uh, 2007's Disney movie, The Game Plan. <laughs> have you ever seen The Game Plan? <laughs> yeah, I have never seen it. It's a, one, really? it's a movie I've been aware of, but... It, I mean, okay, so if you've never seen it, this is a uh, pre-bald... Um, uh, Rock, not Dwayne yet by any means. This was mm. he was far from Dwayne at this time. Still, uh, he was still the Rock. Uh, he, uh, un, unknown, unbeknownst to him, he uh, ends up having a daughter. Uh, she shows up at his doorstep. Uh, at this time, he is uh, the Tom Brady, the Peyton Manning, the Russell Wilson, if you will, of the. Uh, "Quote unquote," we'll call it uh, the FFL, the Fake Football League, um, the Disney Football League. Uh, he is the quarterback of the Boston Rebels, uh, making a, a a beeline for their "quote unquote" Super Bowl, and uh, gets a knock at, the, at his penthouse door, and it's a little child, and he thinks he's selling Girl, Girl Scout cookies or whatever, and she's like, "I'm your daughter, Peyton." And they go through the DNA, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, it really is his daughter. And then he gets kind of thrown from that bachelor life uh, into life as a single father and all this stuff. And hilarity ensues, just like any Disney movie. Uh, but it's such a feel-good movie. It was a movie that, I don't know, for the longest time I would go to sleep to because the soundtrack to it is so good. Um, El I mean, I would say Elvis. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, the Rock is a is a huge Elvis fan as it is, so there's so much like Elvis in this movie. Um, but the rest of the soundtrack just is just so good. So it's yeah, the game plan is it's mine. Adorable. Do what? It's adorable. It's, it's adorable. Really, I'll get it's it back. So it's it is such an adorable movie. It's such a it's such a great family film. Uh, seeing this whole kind of 180 that that his character you know does and it's it's just yeah it's just awesome all uh, righty gerard what is your number seven sir so derek i thought you took my number seven pick from me <laughs> and i was about to get a little i was about to get a little upsetting spaghetti but it is it is cool runnings from 1993 
you know, the the Jamaican bobsled team headed up by none other than the great late John Candy. Just that I if you've never seen this movie, do yourself a favor, pause this right now, go watch Cool Runnings and then come <laughs> back. Just because if you know it, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's an absolute awesome movie about four Jamaicans that come to the Winter Olympics and now are part of a bobsled team. I don't want to give away too much just because, like I said, if you haven't seen it, you're missing out on so much. But it's just you want to talk about good family early Disney fun as a child. This is right up there at the top top five. So great movie and def- definitely a great family movie. Just to feel good, like Disney just knows knew how to do it then with movies like I mean, like you said, Little Giants was a Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game plan, all all these kind of things is just I mean, Disney's just great. It, it, big Green, that's another good one, Disney one from that era, you know. What was it? Yeah. Big the big green. The big green, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. I just love the egg. That was my favorite part about the whole thing. <laughs> the egg. <laughs> But let's uh let's not get an egg here and move on to your <laughs> number seven there, Derek. I know I kind of came with it. Don't worry about it. Just just roll with it. Don't All think right. too hard, Dash. All right. <laughs> so my number seven, it's a uh, story following a competitor who he gets at the beginning of the movie. Uh, he gets kicked out of the military, um, and then kind of has to go on this you know big journey. Um, there's some tragedy that happens with him and his family, um, and he has to kind of like. Re- redeem himself and just kind of redeem, you know, he kind of does it for his country. Um, he starts out, you know, at, he ends up as an athlete after he's in the military, starts out in these very small arenas. Nobody kind of gives him a shot. Nobody respects him. But then, you know, from the beginning, it's, he starts to kind of prove how, you know, how much he, he knows and his using his kind of like things he learned in the military is able to win in these competitions, moves up and up and up and up. Eventually, he makes it to, you know, the big, the grand Coliseum, you know, where everybody in the country is now taking notice of him. You know, all the sports bets are noticing him. Even the most important people in the country are noticing him. And the movie, uh, there's a couple more, you know, uh, competitions. When it finally ends with the final match between him and kind of the, the main bad guy who's been in this movie, um, this final, final matchup, I'm talking about, of course, 2000s Ridley Scott-directed Gladiator. Uh, whoa, 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 you just went, woo, there was, that was, wow, okay, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking Mr. Balboa himself, you know, throwing the punches, uh, you know, fighting Dolph Lundgren and actually getting KO'd in the ring, but wow, wow, for a second there, oh, wow, that was good, I Derek, I that was you good. Guys up a little bit. Thank you, thank you, you know, but I was thinking about this movie, and I was like, you know what, Gladiator really does have the perfect formula for a sports film, you know, and I think it doesn't get really talked about as a sports movie because it's kind of, you know, in ancient times it's seen as a historical epic, which of course it is, but it's a, it's, you know, gladiators, gladiation was the, was the blood sport of the time. And yeah, it kind of does everything you want to see from a sports movie. It's got the, you know, he kind of makes his way up, goes through all these great matches and it's just a great movie. You know, Russell Crowe gives one of the all time performances. Uh, so does Joaquin Phoenix as the evil emperor you know, he's doing it for the glory of Rome, and it just is this kind of amazing, sweeping epic, and just kind of, you know, sport, even non-sports fans can love it, but, you know, sports fans can probably get that little bit of extra gleam from it, but yeah, I, I really absolutely love Gladiator. Um, it's, you know, all an all-timer for Ridley Scott, who's made, you know, some all-time great movies just on his own, so yeah, Gladiator is my number seven sports movie. Had to give you guys kind of a curveball there, um, but yeah, that's my pick. A uh, a movie that I have never seen. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Um, okay. It, and it's Russell Crowe for me. Yeah. That's the reason okay. why. When the he's movie, good in it, man. He's good in it. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Da- I don't doubt that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took me a while to come around to Russell Crowe. Uh, American Gangster was the big one for me. That um, I'm between American Gangster and A Beautiful Mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was the other one? He, he did. A, he, what was the? He did like a crime drama. Was it called the Next Three oh. Days? Oh, the oh, other guys? Yeah. No. It was like that's, the a, next... that's a comedy. That's really good. Yeah. I love the other guys. Yeah. No, I think it was called the Next Three Days. 
I, I, yeah, um, I never saw that one, but yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. His wife was like, yeah, it is the you got the name right. Yeah, next three yeah. days. Yeah, that's it. That was, it was such an intense movie, but more than anything, American Gangster was it for me. And I think what it was, I didn't like the way he looked. <laughs> I get hung up on weird stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't like the way he looked, and so I was just like, I just can't see anything you're in. I mean, yeah. but it is it is the OG. Like you want to talk about a sports movie in its own right the coliseum was yeah. literally mm-hmm. the og sport of anything yeah. you know chariot racing mm-hmm. fighting tigers and nonsense yeah that scene when they first see the coliseum and it's just like this you know the cinematographer i don't remember who the cinematographer is but like the cinematographer in that movie is so great you just kind of see this like upward angle you're looking at it, it just looks like the most impressive thing you've ever seen in your entire life Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so really, really good. It won Best Picture that year. So, yeah, I, I love Gladiator. Well, speaking of movies that should have won Best Picture, sorry, I can't do it as good as you do, Jared. No, that's right. <laughs> the way you do it is it kind of rolls off the tongue and it, it makes no sense half the time, but it just, it's just, it's just perfect. So, I'll just, I'll go with that. Um, uh, so my next one, two, three, four, five six because this is my number six pick i should have just looked at the number um Good job dash they're all so interchangeable this number six one could be my number one so it's these movies are are so close together um i, I had to pick an order so take it you take it take this as what you will this is not the definitive best sports movie ever this is my top six okay so if you don't like it you can suck it i don't care because my number six can get a lot of criticism but i'm sorry i love me some kevin coster and i love me some dennis larry and i'm a big browns fan this comes oh. with <laughs> 2014 this is draft day i freaking love this movie and I, I, and I love it for those reasons kevin costner uh is the gm uh, you, you have Dennis Leary as the head coach. You have Jennifer Garner as, 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 as you know, she, she does the salary cap. She does, she does all that. Stuff. You have Terry Crews in the movie. Um, there's Chadwick. Just, huh? Chadwick's in Chadwick it. Chadwick Bozeman. Yes. It's Ray. It's uh, not Ray Jennings. Cause that was Terry Crews, son. Oh, I forget who, what his character name. I've seen this movie so many times. <laughs> I would rent this movie over and over and over and over and over, like on Redbox. And finally, once I sat down and gone, dude, you paid like $30. You should just buy the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally just bought it digitally and I will watch it every every so often. It's usually after a Browns game to where I'm like, oh, they lost. Well, <laughs> let me watch this movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> I yeah, this it's a feel-good movie for me. I just I I love it. 2014's draft day. Uh, Jared, what is your number six, sir? You know, it would help is if I had my list back up. I don't know why I mm. closed out of it because I forgot who Chadwick Boseman was for a brief moment there. So I wanted to oh. look it up. Uh, so you actually mentioned my number uh, six pick uh, there, Dash. Uh, 1993 Sandlot. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah, somebody was going to have it on the list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it it was it was a dog for me that got me. It was you know that that scary dog in the in the field, and it's just oh, the ball goes over the fence. You never get it. It was it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was it was awesome. Just everything about all the kids and everything, all like that. So I enjoyed it a lot. I seen the Sandlot one time. Uh, I I was short growing up. I mean, I'm not that tall now <laughs> either. <laughs> But the amount of times that I would say something funny or whatever, and people going, oh, you're killing me, Smalls. Shut <laughs> up. I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> shut you up quick enough. It, it's just, oh, that's all I heard growing up. So, yeah. I, I just think it was Dude, cool I get it. Zoolander came out when I was 10, so I got a lot of those quotes. Yeah. I guess. Ah, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I just I like how the kid ended up doing something with baseball in the end. You know, he was he was the announcer. Uh, the the one kid who made out with the lifeguard, they ended up marrying with each other. And just like it was so cool because it didn't just tell you the childhood story. It it gave you the whole kind of this is what everybody did after the fact. And I really thought that was cool. I really liked that about the movie as it kind of spread the love and spread the wealth out there. So very cool. Yeah. And it, 
it's cool to like, you know, I love those movies that aren't like professional sports. Like it's kind of, you know, like this and white men can't jump. It's kind of just like, I'm more, like what you felt like as a kid playing sports, you know, yeah. it's so cool to have that feeling, you know, in a, in a movie. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're going to spread the love out here to you, Derek. What's uh, what's your number next six? There we go. Cool. All right, yeah, so- Dash. You love it. You love it so much. It's just right there. I hit it every time. I, I Can't wait. Get away for, from I wait for the end of your pick. So when you throw it to somebody else to go, <laughs> what is it going to come with? And, and it's just it, it. You never fail. So yeah, just keep it up. All right. So last time I was talking about gladiators. Now I'm moving on to the kind of the modern day gladiators, as in hockey enforcers. And there's a couple of different movies you could go with here. And I was really back and forth on which hockey movie I wanted to include. But I got to go with kind of the OG one, the classic from uh, I believe 1977, yeah, uh, which is the Paul Newman uh, movie uh, directed by George Roy Hill, Slapshot. It is one of the most raunchy, dirty, fun sports movies you will ever watch. It's just about these guys, these minor league hockey players just being like just terrible, horrible people. And it's so funny. Like it is just ridiculous the things they get up to it's just they get in these fights there's these the Hanson brothers it's kind of a classic it's like a pioneer for so many not just hockey movies but just kind of sports films in general uh Paul Newman like years later who's kind of you know obviously he you know is this respected actor who's been won Academy Awards and done all these amazing things and he's like yeah I you know my favorite movie that I've ever done was Slapshot this movie with all these bad words and nudity and just like violence and just just really just, you know, like, not exactly a B movie, but it's not prestige cinema, but you can just watch that. And even though it's from the seventies, it just feels just like really modern. It is just a ridiculous over the top fun ride. And for any hockey fans, this is an absolute must watch. You know, speaking of, Oh, sorry, Dash, go ahead. No, I was going to say, this is, this is the, we wouldn't have movies like goon if it wasn't for, for slap shot. Uh, mm-hmm. both movies I highly respect. I, I love Sean Williams, Scott and Luke Schreiber, but Slapshot, yeah, the Hanson brothers, just ridiculously funny and, and so good and just, yeah, great, great pick, yeah. great pick. Uh, I, I think it was... Goon and this, and it, Goon just, or this just edged it out. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying, Jared? Yeah, I was, I think it was Mystery Alaska was the one that I was watching that you want to talk about some dirty, raunchy motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Like, Sorry, I dropped the f bomb there, Dash. You can bleep no, me out. You're good, no. But like, like that was a like that was kind of that's what I thought of when you were talking about Rush. It was like, oh, Mystery Alaska, the the goons that get you know the New York Rangers to come out and play, and they're talking to one of the guys like, oh, I slept with so and so's wife, and you're just like, what the devil's going on here? Like, yeah, no, that excellent pick, Dash. Excellent pick, another, pick, guy. Another movie I forgot about, Mystery Alaska. All right, one yeah. timer over to you, Dash. You know. All right, like I said, my top six here, all so interchangeable. Um, this, uh, these two movies, whether it be Draft Day or my number five pick, you it, to me, they share that same overall feeling of you get to see the inside workings, not what's just on the field, but what GMs have to go through. Uh, this is another general manager story uh, and one of the greatest baseball general manager stories of all time. I'm speaking of the story of Billy Bean. Uh, this is Jonah uh, Hill and Brad Pitt. Uh, this is 2011's Moneyball. Um, I absolutely mo- love this movie so much. Uh, you get a young Chris Pratt in this movie. Um trying to think who else you get in this movie I'm, I'm missing somebody you get balls of money don't you though you do you get balls of money robin wright's in it it's a, it's wright, a lot of baseball yeah. players but and yeah. spike jones and spike jones yeah i forgot I spike, jones is spike jones is her husband yeah such a, a hilarious character too and, and yeah played so well but you really get to see like i said it's the inner workings whether it be uh, Kevin Costner's character in Draft Day or Billy Bean's character in Moneyball, uh, taking what Jonah Hill teaches him, uh, what he's learned of analytics and everything and numbers uh, to win baseball games, uh, takes the Oakland Athletics onto one of the biggest streaks of all time. Um, 
and misses out pretty much what by two years, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Red Sox winning the World Series, the, the World Series, uh, using the same analytics, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that the Oakland Athletics uh, go by. It's such a great movie. Like I said, both movies give me that they they have that same feel. Uh, both really good soundtracks as well. Um, but yeah, whether you're talking Kevin Costner or Brad Pitt, two different kind of generations of, of actors, but both kind of give the same kind of stoic um, hero leadership role um, to their to their uh, uh, portrayal of those GM characters. So there we go. My number five, the top of my back half, Moneyball is my number five. Jared, take us to your number five pick. Stop naming movies and picking in order, Dash. Please (laughs) stop. Because this is 2011's Goon. This is 2011's Ah. Goon. Um, It it was just Sean William Scott being that dopey idiot just who can check. Because like I actually played hockey in the, uh, I think it was my junior year where I played on a team where I really kind of learned how to play uh, inline hockey They actually down in Texas. And we actually made it to a playoff game and it was kind of on my back being that guy being like Sean William Scott. You know, I was the bigger dude. I would check people on the boards. You weren't supposed to hit because it was inline hockey, but like, I just liked to be that guy. And uh, it was just kind of cool. And then like, just to see him get intertwined in everything, like he falls for a girl, he starts to get into the politics of hockey. And you're just like, dude's like, I just want to smash things and I'm good at it and get into fights. That's what I do. I protect this one individual. He is my guy. And just to see a, a dopey guy like Sean William Scott, who kind of plays that guy pretty well to get into that scenario. I thought it was just dope. So this is a cast that I love between Sean William Scott and Liam Shriver and Jay Baruchel is such an underrated character in this movie. It's just that goofy, lovable sidekick that, that absolutely loves his best friend. And then the relationship between Sean William Scott and the girl is, is just simply adorable. You, you find out how much of a protector that he wants, that he, that he is just in real life kind of a thing uh, with mm-hmm. his character to what he brings on the ice and off the ice, like you said. Great movie. Yeah, God, yeah. yeah. and Sean William, yeah, Sean William Scott's performance, he's just so, like, lovable and feel good, but just, like, you know, it kind of is so in opposition to, like, him just being, like, this brutal enforcer, but he's just so nice and you know, have stuff like, you know, when he just yells, pick 69, it would be hilarious. And he's just like, is that number taken? He's so polite. And then he was <laughs> beat the shit out of you. It's so great. I, I love that movie. It came close to me. If it wasn't for Slapshot, I would put it on my list. I have no fancy transition here. Dude, we'll just <laughs> Waiting go. for you. you all right. I was like, all right, send me up. Well, I was going to go be like, go ahead and pick your number five. But I was like, that's too, everyone's going to see that a mile away. So Derek just glide on in here big guy well my number five it's uh it's a real this is maybe the most you know famous movie that is on my list it's an iconic movie that spawned a great franchise it was really really big in the 80s had one of the all-timer songs ever from a movie um and this franchise actually is still kind of going today although it's been kind of rebooted around the next generation of um the people in this movie uh, this is directed by uh, John C. Abbotson. Um, I'm talking, of course, oh, it's also got, I should mention, one of the all-time great training montages. Um, not Rocky, sorry. Uh, the Karate Kid. God, are you serious? <laughs> Eric, you need to I stop to that it. immediately, sir. Oh, uh, I literally I already had it written down here. I was like, oh, he's talking about Rocky. <laughs> I love Rocky. But John G. Abbotson did it again. A few years later, he did it in the 70s with Rocky. He came back and did it again in the 80s with The Karate Kid, one of my all-time favorite movies. I mean, I think I might like Karate Kid 2 a little bit better in terms of movies, but as far as sports movies, I love Karate Kid 1. It's just kind of this story. He's this beat-down kid. You know, nobody cares about him. Then he learns karate from Mr. Miyagi. Rob Macchio has such a great character in that movie. You know, this... It's really deep, you know, he's this uh, survivor of an internment camp and his wife and unborn child died in the internment camp while he was like literally fighting and winning a medal of honor for the US and comes back and he becomes this like stoic mentor for him and there's this great showdown, you know, where he makes his way through the tournament. I love a good tournament movie and this movie ends with with him going against the Cobra Kai's 
And, you know, you see Johnny, who is, you know, been much more explored, of course, in the Cobra Kai show, but, you know, and then him kind of being manipulated by John Kreese and just kind of the dark side of karate. And it ends, of course, with one of all the all-time great sports endings. Everyone remembers the crane kick. Which one of us hasn't tried to do that, tried to, you know, put your arms up? And it never works in real life, but it's so cool in the movie. I, I love the Karate Kid. Uh, I can I can watch it. You know, it's one of the, another one of those movies I can watch. Whatever. I can tell Dash is upset. <laughs> I picked it over Rocky, but I, well, I love me some Karate Kid. Here, here's here's some good news uh, for you, Dash. Here's mm-hmm. some good news for you because apparently, uh, according to many people, there's a a, 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 a uh, oh god, what is that called? Uh, a thing where basically the crane kick because they kicked him in the head was an illegal kick. kick. An illegal yeah, kick. it was illegal. They made yeah. a fake thirty for thirty about it. It's hilarious. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, you need to watch it. That's illegal. I'm sorry. I, I fully stand by. Everybody knows I'm a big How I Met Your Mother fan. If it wasn't for that show, we wouldn't have gotten Cobra Kai. No, yeah. This is, I mean, Cobra Kai is Barney's, you know, uh, the whole that whole episode of, of his mm. birthday is why we have Cobra Kai. Mm. Johnny Lawrence is the hero in that movie. You and you can actually back, well, absolutely go watch it through that lens. Rewatch it. You can, and it's but still a great movie. You can watch it. It, from- it is still a great movie. Yeah. But if you go into that movie thinking that this villain has moved in from Reseda to the hill, <laughs> and Johnny Lawrence is the hero, it still stands up, but it makes mm-hmm. sense. Yep, yep. It's a great it's, movie. You can watch it multiple different ways, you know, yeah. multiple interpretations for this classic. It's so weird that you can do that. <laughs> That's a good sign of a good movie, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, speaking of other good movies, Dash, take us to your number four. Well, we are going to go from John Kreese uh, to um, the, the Dentist Stanton. We are going okay. from one epic bad guy to another epic bad guy. If you know the, 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 the name of the actor, uh, if, 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 I'm sorry, the name of the character that I just mentioned, you obviously know this movie. Uh, this movie was sponsored by Hendrix Hockey. The number, the leading name in hockey apparel for the Junior Goodwill Games. Uh, this movie had cameos by Christy Yamaguchi, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Scott Hamilton. Uh, this movie was centered around the Junior Goodwill Games of the Olympics uh, and starred none other than Mr. Outsider himself, Mr. Emilio Estevez. This is The Mighty Ducks 2. Oh yes, okay. I I love the Mighty Ducks. I, I love the franchise, the whole franchise. Um, maybe not so much the Game Changers, because um, that's just crap. Um, <laughs> but the the first two movies, especially the third one, not as much. I liked I liked what they did with it, but the fact that Emilio was only in it for maybe twenty minutes altogether uh, is, is bad for me because I love Emilio Estevez being an eighties kid. But the Mighty Ducks 2 it was really the first, I mean, it was the first time, the first iteration that we got of, uh, you know, the NHL hockey team, the inaugural team with the hockey mask duck bill. And so when they changed hockey jerseys halfway through the championship game, uh, they came out with the new jerseys on. It's just a great movie. Uh, the best line in there is when you have, uh, oh, Gunnar Stahl go, let's go shake their hands like from the Iceland team. It's just, it's just hilarious. I will sit there and rewind that line every single time. Uh, good old Gunnar Stahl. Um, yeah, thoughts on the Mighty Ducks because I want to fight somebody on this one. Isn't that illegal to change your jersey halfway through? Though? It is not. Not in the really? Jersey, not in the Goodwill Games. It is not. There is no ruling, uh, in, it, at least according to the movie. Uh, there is no ruling. There is no. Uh, there is no rule in the in the rule book that you can't change jerseys. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the line in the movie when they come out. <laughs> so that and I, you got the quack attack is back, Jack. One of my other favorite lines in the movie. Yeah, this is a great, great '90s movie. You know, I I'm always impartial to it because you know I I grew up here and I've lived my whole life in Southern California, actually closer to Anaheim than to LA. So you know I've Actually, you know, it's like a 10-minute drive for me over to the Honda Center where the Ducks play. So, you know, just because of the fact they were called the Ducks, I loved this movie as a kid, you I'm know? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's Arrowhead Pond. 
it, yeah, the pond, as it was yeah. formerly, it's still the <laughs> pond in my heart, you know, yes. the pond, uh, is, is great, you know, it's um, like, but, calling, uh, it's I think like calling it Paul Korea in this one, who <laughs> is Paul Korea in this one or is he in number three, who Paul Korea, he's the one of the all time great ducks, although he did kind of do his dirty for a little bit, but I, you know, he cameos in, I can't remember if it's this one or this third no, one, thir- but, the third uh, one, the third one, the oh, third one. Okay. Yeah. Cause okay. the only like, big I mean, cameo, I, the biggest cameo we get in, in part two is Gretzky. Okay, I mean yeah. that's pretty good. That's yeah. a pretty good cameo if you're in a hockey movie. You know the yeah. the goat the goat. You know. Yeah, the great one. Yep. All right, Jared. I'm not. I was not I'm not going to. I'm not even going to try it. I feel so dumb try. trying to trying to trying to do it. It's so great one. Yeah. See, that's all I got. <laughs> What's your number four? <laughs> all, right. all right. Cool. I was, I was going to let you suffer for a second there. See how long I could let it last. Uh, so my number four is actually sticking with hockey still. Uh, this is actually miracle from uh, the 2004. Um, I think it's kind of a great telling because it was like, this was, I think when, when America was like, ah, the Olympics are just meh, you know? And like, all of a sudden it's like, no, these college kids could really hang with the big dogs out there. And, you know, I just, it was a great feel good Disney story. God, I hate those words coming out of my mouth, but yeah, like it really is though. I mean, it's one of, it's not just a great Disney movie. It's one of the greatest moments in sports history for at least America. Not? Maybe yeah. not, yeah. maybe not so much for the Soviet union, but <laughs> well, yeah, the Soviet union is there special enough as it is. Uh, but like, no, just like to, to kind of see how it was literally just again, a bunch of ragtag bunch of kids that were just like, congratulations you're part of the u.s olympic team and they're like oh great like cool we get the 16th seed out of 16 that's awesome and then all of a sudden it's like nope you kids are now on a national stage fighting for the cold war you are the face of the cold war go out there and do right by america and just like <laughs> oh just exactly derek exactly the shivers <laughs> the shivers so Dude, I wasn't set up for anything. I have there's I'm gonna here icing up. I don't know, Derek. Just take it, take it away. All right, big guy. All right, all right. Wow. <laughs> so uh so this is my I wanted to include at least one documentary because there are so many great sports docs. So you know, instead of doing a specific sport, I'm gonna do a sports documentary for this pick. Um, and you know, while I could talk about there's a 30 for 30s, there's so many good ones, or like hoop dreams or something like that. What I'm going with is a much more kind of like unknown under the radar sports movie. And I don't know if you guys are familiar at all with uh, SB Nation and John Boyce, but he does these really, oh, there we go. Uh, He does these really interesting video essays. And in 2020, he did one of the most interesting sports related things I've ever seen. It's this, it's called the history of the Seattle Mariners. And even though like I'm an Angels fan and the Mariners are, you know, our bitter rivals, it is such an interesting look at sports in a documentary format that is not really something you see before there's no talking heads there's barely any actual sports clips it's all just kind of about graphs and charts and statistics and looking at things and it really it's kind of this other side of sports like you know if you're a sports nerd there's not a ton of us around but i'm a big sports nerd that you're like oh my gosh look at this thing and look at this thing all the kind of like you know what billy bean that kind of like you know all the different statistics saber metrics all that and it really bra- takes these graphs and these little points on a chart and makes it feel so humanizing. And you're looking at this team that has been through so many ups and downs and heartbreaks. And they, you know, there's stuff like where they had the, the most winning season of all time. And then they just lost to the Yankees. And the Yankees are such a good villain in this. And it, it absolutely looks at sports from a way that you will never see, like, and really don't see anywhere else. And it makes it so interesting and humanizing and just takes a look at this absolutely weird team. Uh, shout out to another one he did, follow up a history of the Atlanta Falcons, which is also very good. But for me, it's got to be History of the Seattle Mariners. It's on YouTube for free. It's kind of a collection of video essays that are five parts that makes a full movie if you watch them all back to back. Very cool. That was one of them I didn't actually watch was the Seattle Mariners one. Oh, but yeah. The- yeah, the, the 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 Falcons one was was superb. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. 
Yeah, if you like the Falcons one, it's the same kind of vibe. Um, so okay. I'm glad you like the Falcons one because it is he's not not enough people know about John Boyce as far as I'm concerned. He is an absolutely brilliant sports writer. Him and Alex Rubenstein and all the guys in SB Nation are doing some really interesting stuff with sports writing. There's a if if you like the kind of graphs and stuff like that, I I can't really remember it because I'm doing two things on my screen and I don't want to mess it up. But there is a kind of smaller YouTube channel. Well, I wouldn't say smaller, but it's, it's a lot like the five point vids and stuff like that, where he's like the worst punt in history or like uh, scoreography. Yeah, I, I think is, is what oh, it's called. Oh, Yeah, that's John Boyce. Yeah. It's uh, SB oh. Nation. That's exactly the oh. same guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, he they're does the same like, dude. Yeah, he, he's if anyone out there has ever heard of scoregami, which is looking at a football game and being like, is this going to be a score that's never happened before? He's the guy who invented that. His video on score got me really interested. So yeah, same guy. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Now I remember that voice. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot that. Holy banana sandwich. Whoops. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I caught on the score got me and I watched that. That was insane. Like, Oh God, he's so good. I, yeah. Wow. He, he's really cool. He's got another really good one. That's on the 1903 Olympics, which are like the worst sporting event that's ever happened. It's really, it's called, <laughs> he does a series called pretty good. Yeah. Anything he's done is really great. But, but as far as like a feature film, this has got to be the one. Very cool. Well, in my opinion, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest moment in NFL history uh, was when this young man from Arizona state came up, couldn't get on with anybody, finally got a walk-on tryout with the Arizona Cardinals and almost broke his neck in the end zone until he stood up and everybody cheered, in a rod we trust. I am speaking of 1996's Jerry Maguire, one of my absolute favorite Films. I was trying to figure out how am I going to go into this? Am I going to go into a help me help you, a, a show me the money? You had me at hello. Uh, in Rod, we trust so many great lines from this movie. Uh, so many great actors, whether we're talking the magnificent, the wonderful couch jumping Tom Cruise, uh, the, the, the ant eater, uh, Renee Zellweger, uh, whether we're talking Cuba Gooding Jr., we're talking Regina King, uh, we're talking Jay Moore as Bob Sugar, uh, Bo Bridges, Jerry O'Connell, so many, so many just great names, um, and it just just an all around great script and uh, an an amazing soundtrack as well with Bruce Springsteen. Um, yeah, that is, that this is a movie I, I can't say anything more about uh, that hasn't already been said. Other than uh, this is a movie, in my opinion, Tom Cruise should have got his first Oscar for, and uh, has still never won an Oscar. Good. Wow, I didn't realize that Tom Cruise never got an Oscar. That's crazy. Nope. More than anything, I think it, it, it should have been this movie. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, speaking of Sugar Dash, so now there, there are three parts here. There are three parts here, and, and you're going to like it here. Okay. Uh, so Love Me Sexy is one of them. It's a great ah, song. Absolutely right, great right. song. Uh, <laughs> we're going to dance to one song and one song only, Lady Humps. And then, of course, Help Me, Tom Cruise. Help Me. This is Will <laughs> Ferrell's... I, I just I think his sports movies are on... It just, I can't pick one of them. Semi-pro is just hilarious. The owner, player, coach just gets high off of Love Me Sexy, a song that his mom wrote that he perfected. When he's trying to be a driver in Talladega Nights, you know, his drunk, crazy dad, just he can't, like just the puma in the car. And then, of course, Blades of Glory, where just it's an ice skating thing with two dudes who have been, again, it's never been in the rules that two guys can't skate in a couple's. And it just... Everything about those movies and Will Ferrell is just phenomenal. I love him. He is comedy gold to me with Step Brothers and everything else that he's done. There are very few Will Ferrell movies that I don't like, even though I know a lot of people either love them or hate them. But, you know. But those people who hate him are just wrong. There are, but, you know, like, how can you how can you hate Tal Dagonites? I love that. Exactly. Those are all great, but, like, Tal Dagonites for me is, is an all-timer. Yeah. <laughs> that scene where he's he's like am i going faster like not not so much big guy <laughs> what was that what was that what was that that was the other cars <laughs> passing you <laughs> how'd you get in a video game so fast 
what if you just, what if you just say you like really thin pancakes? I had a whole mess of crepes this morning. <laughs> nope, oh, nope, because so- I would know what I mean. Break it off. <laughs> oh, my God. So for a while, I, I would every once in a while, I would fill in in a cafe over <laughs> at my work. And anytime somebody would order a macchiato, I would just hear in my head, just, you've made me spill my macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's move quick and fast here. Go ahead and qualify for that next lap, Derek. Let's hear where uh, you're at. So this is my only TV show that I've gone on the list. And I'm probably, I'm not going to zag again on you guys. You guys are going to know what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is a, you know, starring another comic genius. This one is uh, Jason Sudeikis. And it had a weird road to being a TV show because it started out as a commercial, oh. like for uh, the Premier League, which you think like TV shows based on commercials are bad. Who watched the Caveman show? Um, but, you know, this, this, you know, years later became a TV show for Apple Plus, which who cares about Apple Plus? But um, this is, of course, uh, one of the most feel good shows of recent years, it's something that helped a lot of people get through some depressing times in the pandemic because of its main character being so just wholeheartedly good and feel good while also not feeling like too saccharine. It feels still like real and it deals with some real stuff. I'm talking, of course, about Ted Lasso. Um, anybody who's watching the video can see behind me, I've got my Danny Rojas jersey hanging up. Um, Danny Rojas, obviously one of my favorite characters, football is life. Um, but this show is just does so many things to make it feel good, but it also really kind of like touches on the other side of that too. With season two, it kind of goes into some darker stuff, but this character is so ever, you just are around Ted Lasso and you want to, you want to be like him. And even though he's, you know, the kind of premise is just this ridiculous premise of, you know, it's a football coach, an American football coach that's gets hired as a football coach in, you know, England. And it's kind of about the premiership and, you know, this ups and downs and, it's really, really good. Great performances, of course, by Sudeikis, but also, um, you know, you've got all the supporting cast, all his actual players like Dash, you know, like this is another show, you know, show about a manager or a coach. Um, but I absolutely love Ted Lasso. Anybody out there who is listening and you haven't gotten around to watching this yet, it is so good. It also touches on a lot of things that really don't get talked about in sports films and TV shows that often um, it touches on, there is in season two, there's this kind of this ongoing story where there's a character that is kind of, you know, he's almost an analog for Colin Kaepernick and everything that he went through and just kind of taking up and standing up for what you believe. And then there's also, it also really touches uh, with Ted specifically about mental health and how we talk about mental health in sports and Ted's um, issues with anxiety and how reporters report on that and stuff like that and how things get blown out of proportion. So a lot of things in sports that are kind of becoming more and more prominent and more noticed in years, this has uh, brought, to the, uh, brought to the light. Um, so I, I can't recommend Ted Lasso enough. Um, but let me just, uh, yeah. Well, well, you guys have anything to say about it before I kick it to Dash? So I'm a big Sudeikis fan. I really am. I'm a, I'm a big uh, SNL fan pre probably 2018, 2019 maybe. I'm not a big fan of the new cast. Um, and I think because it gets too political, but I'm a big Sudeikis fan. I'm a, I can't make that be big enough. <laughs> Such a big Sudeikis fan. I just don't like soccer. So that's the thing. It doesn't really, you don't really need to know or fo- it doesn't really focus too much on soccer to the point yeah. where like my friend who is not even a sports fan, I was like, hey, you should check this out. And he's like, I don't like sports at all. And I was like, no, no, just watch it. Trust me. It, it, you'll like it. It's got, you've even got some football references in there. Even if you don't know anything about sports in general, right. this is still really good, especially like today, because he won the Emmy for this for yeah. best actor. Um, so I would say, Dash, like, if you like, you got to check this one out, man. I'm a, bit, um, I'm a like I said, I'm a very big Sudeikis fan, whether it be, yeah, uh, where the Millers, uh, what was the movie he did with uh, Cameron Diaz? Uh, what happens in Vegas? Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. I mean, it's just he's he's just a a, a great comedic actor and just a yeah. Say I, I'll give it a chance, but like I said, I'm just not a big soccer. I'm not a soccer fan. Period. Yeah, what, give it an episode too. The soccer stuff is is kind of just set dressing, honestly. Yeah, and I hate Wait, when you say that he won an Emmy for it. Mm-hmm. And then I heard about the news about how Spider-Man got snubbed for like everything, even though it's been the biggest and best thing in the world. 
all those mean absolutely nothing to me anymore. Well, those are different awards. This is the Oscar people aren't the Emmy people. The Emmy people yeah. are, are award much more... shows. Yeah, no, award I mean, shows. You, can't, you just can't group, well, group everybody. To Oscars, the Emmy people are, are much more ahead of the times, I think, honestly, yeah. than the Oscars. Yeah. The Oscars... And Jason Sudeikis was also really high when he accepted his award. It was great. <laughs> I take that back. I will. I will give that a shot. If he got stoned <laughs> out of his gourd to accept an award, and he won it, okay, all right. That's yeah. that might be worth it then. Because it was all, be you know, it. it was all digital. You know, it was kind of like how we're doing it here. Um, because it was like in you know 2020 or early 2021, so they weren't doing in-person award shows, and he's just like is wearing like just like his pajamas or something, and he's just like, I won this award. This is great, guys. I'm so happy. And he's just, you know, he's got like Anya Taylor Joy wearing like like elegant nightgowns and he's just wearing whatever he just wears around the house it was great <laughs> well dash why don't we lasso your next pick oh that was a good Are one serious man that was a good one right there <laughs> i heard man. that and i was like i'm waiting for that i'm waiting for it we, we're gonna it's gonna be good boy <laughs> <laughs> all right let me see if i can if i can figure this one out Dash, are you changing it at the last minute again? I'm I'm debating. No, I can't do it. I can't do it because I can't put mm. this. I can't put my number two over my number one. My number one is wholeheartedly in my top five, okay. if not my top two of all time. Uh, but this movie brings us uh, to uh, some of the greatest lines in cinematic history. I will put this up there with stuff like... Uh, I'm going to make him an offer you can't refuse. Um, that didn't have any sports in it, Dash. No, but I'm saying with the greatest lines in history, frankly, my okay. dear, I don't give a damn. Uh, this line being, uh, I look like I just jacked off an elephant. Um, I'm speaking of... Uh, right up Orlando, there. Orla- it's right. It's, if not the best, it's one of the best. Uh, Orlando Jones, Gene Hackman, young John Favreau, not Rudy John Favreau, uh, but the the man himself, number sixteen in your program, number one in your heart. This is Keanu Reeves with the replacements, a the story of re, a replacement scab team after the uh, football league has gone on strike. Uh, they all rehire they hire replacement players to finish out their season. Uh, Sugar Shane Falco, Sugar Steps fame, Shane Falco, uh, leads this team, uh, coached by Gene Hackman, uh, all the way, uh, to their quote unquote Super Bowl. Um, and in my opinion, and I still stand by this, and I will always stand by this the Washington Commanders is such a bad team name, and it should have been called the Washington Sentinels. It, it would have just been perfect. I'm sorry. Why? Why was it not? The Commanders, really? That's almost as bad as, I don't know, say, the Cleveland Guardians. Um, but, yeah. Oh, thoughts on the it's replacements, okay, please. I would love the replacements. I've, so I've actually never seen it. Oh, this I is know. like, at one time was like the quintessential TBS movie. <laughs> like it was I would always on see it advertised. every Saturday tonight at eight TBS Keanu Reeves the replacements it was it's such a great movie everything everything about it and it's just you it, it's weird that this cast works but it does um and it's such a great comedic role for for Keanu um yeah there's my number two two thousands the replacements. Uh, Jared, what is your number two as we inch closer and closer to number one here? So Steve Baker and his uncle Gary Baker desperately scheme to fix an Olympic event, or I should say a bunch of Olymp- the Olympics in, in general, uh, because uh, the janitor that Steve hired lost his fingers in a lawn mowing accident. But, and this is the ringer, they didn't need to fix the Olympics because it was already fixed for them. Uh, this is Johnny Knoxville in The Ringer, if, if you're not, not gathering here. I love this movie for a couple of simple facts. Number one, it's Johnny Knoxville. Number two, they actually used a lot of actors that would play in the Special Olympics. And number three, 
he gets exactly what would be coming to him if he tried to fix the Special <laughs> Olympics. Yeah. It's a movie that I think could hold up still today. This is this is a movie that I will say probably does have one of the best lines in when the hell did we get ice cream? <laughs> that <laughs> that is a good. That is classic. It's one of the best scenes. I'm sorry. I will. I will fight you on this. That delivery Arguably. that he gives is incredible. Oh, like when that act. I, I, I wish I knew his name, but such a good, such good delivery. Yes. And Brian Cox plays such a slimy guy yeah. in this movie. Like, yeah. It, it's 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 quintessential johnny knoxville humor and i love how like the moment he gets in there and they're like you're not really special are you he's like what are you guys talking about and they're like yeah we can tell big guy and immediately they're like oh you need money for this guy that great we're on board just yeah. and it just you want to talk about feel good humor like this is feel good humor that i can actually get behind so such a great pick such a great pick such a great movie great movie great movie so we're going to go to Derek's number two podium pick here. All right, my number two. Uh, so this is one that already got mentioned before, but it's it's one of my all-time just favorite movies ever. I, I, you know, I was like dash waffling between my number one and my number two, but this ended up being my number two. Um, and that's Moneyball. You've already talked about it, Dash. I don't want to build it up too much, but, you know, Bennett Miller, he's another guy who's directed multiple great sports movies. Um, I didn't point out because I wanted to save a little something for me that um, – you know, along with all the great cast that you mentioned, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman is in this. It's just so, so good in it. About that, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, the, the script is, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, it's got, it's, you know, of course, uh, Sorkin did a lot of work on the script here. Um, but yeah, it is just kind of like all the stuff you were saying. It is this story about this guy who helped change baseball. And, you know, it's about kind of like the people who they're stuck in the past and they don't want to see anything new and change. They don't want to see people upend the, their way of life that they've had for you know baseball's been around since the 1800s and it's we've always done it this way so you can't do it this way to the point where like Clint Eastwood made an angry man movie in response to this movie <laughs> but like like I I absolutely love Moneyball it is a beautiful film. I think baseball movies are probably the most cinematic kinds of films like there are so yeah. many great baseball movies because I think baseball naturally lends itself really well to filmmaking um, for a lot of reasons that I could go on and on about. Um, so there was a lot of different baseball movies I was considering putting for my baseball pick. But yeah, it's it's got to be Moneyball, um, all time great film. I think it, I think it has something to be said about the lights and seeing that ball in slow motion after it's been hit, the roar of the crowd, and something that that Moneyball does so good is you hear that they're they they they're lost they've lost that comeback. They've lost it, and it's 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 almost over. And the crowd is cheering, and they're cheering, and they're cheering. And he swings, and you hear that crack, and then no, no, yeah. And then it's just like that look up that Brad Pitt gives. It's so it just it draws you in. And people complain that you know baseball is this three, four, five hour game, but there's something to be said whether you're a, a fan from season from spring training or if you're just a fair weather October fan. There's something about when it's a great, when it's a good game, it's great. And that, that roar of the crowd watching a game, whether you're in person or, or, or watching it on your couch, can just pull you in, unlike any other sport can, baseball can. Yeah, the, and one, that's... the one baseball movie I went to, I napped from the third inning till mm -hmm. the eighth inning, and then I watched <laughs> the Houston Astros win. Well, I should say the, the one of two that I went to, and then I went to a uh, I went to a Milwaukee Brewers game where there's two home runs that were shot towards my section, and nothing scares the absolute nothingness out of you as that ball coming straight towards your face, oh. going, "Oh, is it going to hit me in the second deck?" <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Derek, I interrupted you. No, my apologies. No, it's all good because yeah, like it kind of goes to what you're saying about how you fell asleep, like and dash what you're saying about having these great cinematic feeling moments in baseball is that's what's so good about baseball movies is you don't have to kind of like sit around when it's a blowout and like things are boring, you know, like it gets to these cinematic moments that happen naturally in baseball and kind of like presents them in a format where like as much as I like sports and I like baseball, for me, baseball movies are better than actual baseball. And I love this one because spoiler alert for a thing that happened in real life and they made a movie about 10 years ago like the a's lose like it's 
I like actually kind of like have a soft spot in my movie, like uh, for movies where it doesn't all just work out in the end. It's not all magically resolved at the end. It's not like, you know, oh, we did it like this team that nobody believed in. It's like, yeah, we did something nobody thought we could do. And we went further, but we just couldn't exactly make it. And I love bittersweet endings and Moneyball is absolutely a bittersweet ending. Yeah. Well, let's get into our honorable mentions here before we get to our number one pick. Um, it's it's before no. Before we surprise. get to our bittersweet ending. Yeah, it's no surprise here that I usually have a lot of honorable mentions. Uh, today is no exception. <laughs> I, I have a lot, but I do have one ultimate honorable mention. I'll run through some of these. Some of these have already been said, like Miracle White Man Can't Jump uh major league but i i had fever pitch on here which is a great jimmy fallon drew barrymore uh baseball film uh that that was a lot of fun because it was scripted but it could not be finished because that was the year that the the red sox won the world series and how can you write a better ending to a movie than real life um, I had the Last Dance documentary. Um, I had basketball from the South Park guys. I had Juana Man, uh, which is just a funny Kevin Pollack movie. Uh, the Bench Warmers, uh, Fighting with My Family, which is a great WWE kind of movie. Uh, Teen Wolf, which is a basketball movie. Oh man! Uh, I did have the movie Warrior, Never Back Down, uh, the TV show Heels, uh, Coach Carter, East Bound and Down with the great Kenny Powers. Uh, you're picking out uh, Angels in the Outfield. I had Invincible, I had The Longest Yard, and of course I had number 42 with the great Chadwick Boseman. But my honorable mention comes to us from where I am right now. This is the story of Crash Davis. This is Bull Durham. It would not be a sports movie list for me, at least, without the the without Bull Durham. Uh, the, the stadium still stands here in Durham, although they don't play at the Deep Pack anymore. Uh, they do at the new stadium. Uh, and hopefully maybe in a couple of years, we're going to get our, our move from the minor league team up into the pros and the bull and the Durham Bulls will finally become a pro team. Uh, they're looking to expand. They're on the list. So we shall see. Uh, Jared, hit us with your honorable mention, sir. So my honorable mention includes a, a steeplechase, believe it or not, which is something that many people don't really watch in the Olympics. It also does incorporate boxing. Now, in the training montage of this movie, you see a little bit of boxing. You see a little bit of a cheap uh, a steeplechase, but it's not your typical steeplechase because this is set in Zootopia, where Judy Hopps knocks out a giant rhino oh with a little boxing. <laughs> and she is running the obstacle course, which is technically the steeplechase. So, I mean, if we can kind of use a little bit of a sports movie here, uh, Zootopia is my honorable mention because it has a little bit of a training montage of that Olympic sport, of uh, the Olympic steeplechase. And there's, there's an aspect of boxing into it where she becomes a better fighter. She becomes the police woman or the police bunny that she is. So... I told you I'd hit it. You feel good about yourself. You feel good about I feel yourself. real good about myself. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I feel better about my gladiator pick now. <laughs> yeah. We're going so, through all of these little giants, dodgeball, da, 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 miracle, uh, uh, the Will Ferrell trilogy here, the ringer. I'm like, dude, he better not have Zootopia as number one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of forgot about it really quick while I was going through all mine. And you were like, Zootopia's mother. God bless America. <laughs> I, I told you I will find a way to fit. I struggled. I struggled to fit this one in. And then I remember I rewatched it and I was like, oh, it's a steeplechase. And I was like, that's it. That's the one. There we go. It's it's meh. Here we go. So I squeezed my honorable mention in. Derek, why don't you lay yours out and let's hear what you got, big guy. All right. Like Dash, I've got a, a lot of honorable mentions, including some ones that we've kind of touched on. Um, you know, I talked about Bennett Miller. Another one that he did was Foxcatcher, the wrestling film. Um, we've also got Invictus, Talladega Nights, like I mentioned, um, you know, speak, speaking of racing, Rush, uh, like Dash, I also had Warrior. Another one that's a, you know, an older sports movie, uh, A Knight's Tale, um, Hidalgo, Goon, of course, um, Caddyshack, which I was back and forth with what my golf movie was going to be. Um, a football movie, since I didn't really have one, and I don't think anybody else was going to choose this, would be Leatherheads. Um, then, of course, History of the Atlanta Falcons, like I talked about. 
or sticking with baseball documentaries, Ken Burns' baseball. Um, of course, uh, you've got The Fighter, um, boxing, another boxing classic that nobody's mentioned yet, Raging Bull, um, one of the all-time greats by Scorsese, Dash mentioned 42. Sandlot, of course, um, like I mentioned, there are so many great uh, 30 for 30s. One I just have to mention is uh, Winning Time, Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks, which is just a really good, unkind of known 30 for 30, 30 doc. Um, but the one for my, my honorable mention that I got to talk about is Battle of the Sexes, uh, which is kind of, of course, the story of Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs. Uh, their kind of head-to-head matchup in the 70s, uh, played, of course, by Emma Stone and um, Steve Carell, same directors who did Little Miss Sunshine. This is another just kind of feel-good movie. It's about uh, Billie Jean King, who is a personal hero of mine. She is a pioneer in just kind of terms of, you know, she was this great uh, trend-setting athlete in terms of women's sports. She was very much fighting for equality um, when it come, came to men and women. Uh, she also is a big pioneer in the LGBT community. Um, she's, you know, one of the kind of like first athletes to kind of, you know, be um, at the forefront of that. Uh, but yeah, this is just a really great underrated movie. I love t- tennis movies, so I had to at least include, talk about one tennis movie. And for my money, this is the best, um, really, really uh, great film, um, really great performances, uh, just kind of like a movie. And it's saying something too. It's saying something important about the world while also giving you some entertaining sports stuff. And it's also really fun. So that's my honorable mention. Very good. Very good. All right, moment has arrived for our number one picks. Uh, my my uh, number one is a little bit different, although we have recently changed our formatting of the show to include TV shows. Uh, very few TV shows have made our lists so far. Uh, in my top 10 so far, I have had not a one TV show today until my number one. This TV show is based on a movie, kind of, but more so based on the book. Um, This man can be in uh, Bloodline. This man could be in Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And the only question I have is, what the hell is Coach Taylor doing with Godzilla? This man will always be Coach Taylor to me. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. This is Friday Night Lights, the TV show. Uh, Mm. In my opinion, this is up there with How I Met Your Mother for me. And it's it's very close. I have not seen Friday Night Lights as many times as I've seen uh, How I Met Your Mother 15 times right now so far. I think 15 or 16 times. And it, it's mainly because How I Met Your Mother only 30-minute episodes versus yeah. an hour episode. 30-minute <laughs> yeah. comedy is can go by a lot faster than an hour drama. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I have seen Friday Night Lights, I think, five or six times now so far all the way through. And, of course, I've seen the movie so many times. Um, yeah. This, this movie means so much to me. The book is just an incredible story. Um, yeah. This was this was tough because what Peter Berg was able to do with the movie and 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 the premiere uh, uh, Panthers, um, being able to transition it over from this team but still keep the same logo but change it to the Dylan Panthers, and, and Kyle Chandler's performance, like I said, as as Coach Eric Taylor is is well, it, I will put this up there as one of the greatest characters uh, in TV history. Uh, for me, and it's it's very it's very rare that you know an, an actor can encompass a, a character so much that it's really. I mean, he his career is still going very strong, um, but he it's he's, he's always going to be Coach Taylor to me because of it because it's his that character meant so much to me. Uh, this is also one of the, I won't I won't say where Michael B. Jordan got his start. Uh, Because I was I was a lot younger with the wire and everything, but Michael B. Jordan did two seasons on uh, on Friday Night Lights as uh, the East Dillon uh, Lions uh, QB. So Friday Night Lights that is my number one pick. Jared, what is yours? No, I have to say that the reason why I don't pick many TV shows is because a lot of TV shows I get 
are from like Netflix or Hulu or any subscription that I watch. Right. But I actually technically not have, I haven't had television since I was 18. Yeah. I have, I've never had a television service. So anything that I watch, it's, it's on my own choosing. It's not, I see a commercial for it or something like that. So that's why a lot of TV shows don't really make my list. But this has actually been mentioned at the very, very beginning of the show. Okay. It was my number one all-time favorite sports movie out there. Zoot, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Angels in the Outfield. It, it was yeah. Angels in the Outfield from 1994. I remember watching a very young Jorson, Joseph Gordon Levitt doing the little, little, there's the Angels in the Outfield guys, there's the Angels, there's the Angels guys. And like, I remember just like watching it. And like, I grew up a little bit more cynical after watching it, but like, it was so cool that like you see the fat angel push the guy or you know like the guy kind of move to catch it it was it was very well done it was just it was gorgeous it was beautiful and at the end there were no angels there was never any angels and then he stands up he's like yeah, there's angels out there and it was it was all in your heart it was just believe in yourself so uh, for me as a child that was just like the ultimate ultimate just oh movie and yeah. it still Still tugs at the heartstrings today. So, you know, whether it's uh, Georgetown, Joseph Gordon Levitt at, at such a young age, uh, Danny Glover's character, uh, Tony Danza's turnaround character. Uh, mm. I love Tony Danza's character in this movie so much. Uh, and then, of course, Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. As, as Al, it's, it's, yeah, it is such a great movie. Great it, ending, it was- too. Mm-hmm. phenomenal there's yeah. everything everything about it so thank you derek for for wearing the the, the hat yeah. That, yeah. That, that goes on it so <laughs> glad to represent so let's put a nightcap on your number one <laughs> and and run with it here bud where are we at so mine is one that doesn't really get talked about a lot when it comes to great sports movies and i think part of that is it's just kind of an underrated movie in general but i think part of it is like sports movies kind of tend to be thought of as more realistic things even the comedies they're kind of more gritty and realistic whereas this movie is just off the wall bonkers insane like this is basically a cartoon come to life this is not so much of a representation of real sports as like what you would imagine as sports and you're a kid, what you would play with your cars, you know, your little toys um, and just like what you would imagine. And when you would, and this is a adaptation of an anime. Um, I'm talking of course about the Wachowskis masterpiece speed racer. I absolutely love speed racer. It is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is just so it, it captures everything that I like about sports, the competition and just the drive to be the best and be your best. And, you know, it has this, the kind of like the core theme of this movie is that speed, he wants to like race because he has the love of it. He loves this sport so very much, but then there's so many things that are coming into it that are trying to corrupt this love of his sports that, you know, as a fan, you're watching, you know, it kind of cuts back to him as a kid watching these great races. And then this guy's like, guess what? This race was fixed. It was all about money. It was all about sponsorships. And as you get older, you kind of like learn these things. You get cynical. You're like, okay, there's all this stuff in sports. Like when you watch an NBA game, you're watching the NBA finals. And it's like, and then just like, they bring in like free guy or like, I'm watching the Olympics right now. And they just like, every once in a while, like they get, it'll be a snow, like a commercial with a snowboarder. And they'll meet a Raptor from Jurassic Park. And I'm like, I like the Olympics. I like Jurassic Park. They have nothing to do with each other. Why are you bringing all this corporate nonsense into it? And that's what, speed racer is about he's about fighting back against the the kind of corporate interest all these corrupting influences the people who want to do things in sports for the wrong reason and they don't have the love of it and you see him kind of like it's another feel-good movie where you see speed kind of influence the people around him like you know the announcer is this guy who threw the race he won the race but he did it for the wrong reasons he's affected and you see everyone else and his brother and like the opening scene when he's great he's got like the mario kart ghost of his brother and he just kind of eases up a little bit it is there's it's a you know kind of a barrier entry because it looks so weird but if you can get past that it's actually really to the film's benefit because it takes you into this other world of just like dreamlike sports that could never be in our actual world and it is a beautiful incredible amazing movie that absolutely i think anyone who is a fan of sports or movies in general should watch 
Yeah, it's one of those things. I was as as we're sitting here doing the show, I see your speed racer pop behind you, and I've been seeing it for for a while now. And I was like, I wonder if it's going to pop up on anybody's things. Uh, we did uh, our fastest uh, fastest movies, and this was one of my picks. Uh, awesome. Just awesome, a, man. it's a beautiful movie. The colors, I mean, and a, and a great cast from Goodman to Sarandon to Ricci. Yes. Um, it, it, it especially um, his name is escaping me. Uh, Emil Hirsch. Uh, is speed. Um, it's it's so good. Matthew Fox is Racer X. Um, it's such a great story. Uh, one of my absolute favorite cartoons growing up as well. And I thought what the Wachowskis did uh, as a movie was 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 different as it should have been uh, because the show itself was different. Um, yeah, great pick. Great pick. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my thank you today to Derek. Like I said, uh, he is from the Undercast Company. You can find his pod- his podcast, the Underrated Podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Right now, we are up to one forty two subscribers on the YouTube's. Uh, make sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Everything that we have is right there to the to the uh, I guess the, to the right of me. Uh, make sure to watch us on YouTube, listen to us on Spotify, follow us on Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, next week, next Friday, it is President's Day week, so we are doing our top 10 political movies. Uh, it was bound to happen. We don't, we're a show that does not like to get political, but I figure it's, it's President's Week. Let's go ahead and knock it out the park, get it out of the way here. Uh, so, yeah, top 10 political movies next week is going to be interesting to see what people have. Uh, anyways, my name is Dash Michaels. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, everybody say bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on, guys. Yeah, I had a blast. You. I don't ever get my friend, my people in my podcast don't know about sports, so I get to, I love to get to talk to you guys about it. It was, it was yeah. great, it was great to have you, Derek. And, and Dash, I, it, it, I am Jared in the flock. That is yeah. Derek. You've been Dash, you've been Dash, whichever way I got to point to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right, I'm full screen now. Yeah, I we're don't full know what I'm right talking now. <laughs> Try something a little bit different. If you like the new layout, let, let, let us know. Uh, if you miss the old layout, let us know too. Uh, but more than that, what was your top 10 sports movies and TV shows? Drop a comment in the section below. Uh, Till next week, we will see you. Short Symphonies Podcast. Peace out, Girl Scout. Cut the check.